there's no let up as we move into February, with macroeconomic and company updates coming thick and fast. Top down, the big feature of the week is the Bank of England's first interest rate decision of 2018 at the Monetary Policy Committee. That's the first of eight scheduled meetings for this year and it takes place on February the 8th. Governor Mark Carney is expected to leave both interest rates and quantitative easing unchanged at half a percent and £445 billion respectively. The consensus forecast is for one rate rise of a quarter of a percent to 0.75% by the end of this year. So check out how the vote went, as this may give an indication of how keen the MPC is to further tighten policy by making borrowing more expensive. In November, the vote had been 7-2 for a rate rise. In December, no one voted for another move higher, and we can see how the vote for an increase has varied over the past decade right here. If the bank does move this year, my guess, and I stress it is a guess, is that it will do so alongside the publication of one of its quarterly inflation reports, because it's inflation that's the most likely trigger for action. This chart, which shows inflation as measured by the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, and the Bank of England base rate since 2000, shows how inflation is currently at the very top of the 1-3% to target range given to Mr Carney by the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Now those four inflation reports, by the way, are scheduled for the 8th of February, the 10th of May, 2nd of August, and the 1st of November. Now, bottom up, 10 FTSE 100 firms are due to offer results or trading updates or hold their annual general meeting in the week ahead, and they include DCC and Rand Gold Resources on Monday the 5th of February, Hargreaves Lansdowne on the 6th, GlaxoSmithKline, Imperial Brands, Rio Tinto and Seven Trent on the 7th, and EasyJet and Smith and & Nephew on Thursday the 8th. But for me, the company that's really capable of causing a fuss is BP, which is due to release its fourth quarter results on Tuesday the 6th of February. Now, the oil price rallied throughout most of 2017, and it's now exceeded the $70 a barrel mark. And that's not done BP shares any harm, as we can see here. In fact, the stock's trading near a five-year high. According to OPEC data, demand for oil has been pretty steady. It's been reductions in supply that have buoyed the price of crude. OPEC and non-OPEC nations have stuck to the November 2016 agreement to cut daily output by around 1.5 million barrels a day between them. That deal is now due to run to the end of this year, 2018, after two extensions, although keep an eye on the next scheduled OPEC meeting in Vienna that's set for the 22nd of June, just in case. This all matters to BP, because the higher crude goes, the safer the company's dividend gets. And right now, the stock is offering a yield of around 5.8%. That makes BP something like the 15th highest yielding stock in the FTSE 100 based on analysts' consensus forecasts. But dividends cover, dividend is only covered by earnings by around one time, according to those same forecasts. That's lower than ideal, really twice is comfortable. So BP still has work to do. This chart shows historic and forecast dividend cover. However, in the third quarter of 2017 alone, cash flow of $2.5 billion easily covered dividend payments of around $1.6 billion, and that cover ratio of 1.5 times was the best since the third quarter of 2013, when the oil price was near $90 a barrel, not $70, or $50 as it was it back in Q3 17. So in other words, BP's done a pretty good job of cutting costs, pruning capital expenditure, and being more efficient, so it can make the most of any oil price rises, and for the moment, any talk of BP cutting its dividend for the third time since 1990 has gone very quiet indeed. Besides the dividend, which is forecast to come in change for 2017 at 40 US cents, or around 29.5p a share, watch for comments on underlying replacement cost profitability. Upstream made $1.2 billion in Q3, and refining made $2.2 billion, and as you can see here, the trend has been improving. After that, you need to check on three things, probably again with a dividend in mind. First, capital investment. BP has targeted an annual range of $15 to $17 billion a year out to 2021. Second, disposals. The plan was to raise $4.5 billion of cash in 2017. And finally, net debt. This reached $40 billion in Q3 and gearing is right at the top of the company's target range. So it'd be nice to see that start to come down just to make sure BP isn't paying dividends out of fresh borrowing. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.